Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on Homebrew Vehicle Sandbox and the thing that I am trying to build today is the Nissan Delta Wing. Now quite how to start with the front of this car was a little bit of a faff because it's kind of like a curved, curved sort of point at the front and I can't really do that. On this game I can either have sort of curves going straight up or I can have the nose kind of coming to a point. I settled on this design if you like for the front. It, it ends up with quite a flat sort of blocky nose uh, at the front. There's not uh, not really too much I can do about that at, uh, at this moment in time. This was the best sort of compromise that I could that I could come up with for the front of the vehicle. I then proceeded to go round and build the vehicle out some more. Now trying to get everything to scale was an absolute pain in the ass uh, <laughs> with this one. Uh, even by the time I was finished I'm not entirely sure I was completely happy with uh, with the with the sort of scaling of the uh, of the vehicle but this is this is the the initial design i had for the session now there is quite a big overhang at the back of the delta wing which is what i would i say a big overhang relative relative speaking shall we say that's what i was kind of going for a little bit with this uh, yeah trying to position i we can't have the wheels actually within the wheel arches because they don't as i said last time i don't quite quite work having wheel arches that are perfect u shapes uh, don't actually work for wheels uh, but yeah I, there was there was the sort of design I was going for and then trying to build up the chassis a little bit uh, as well. This was an interesting one to build uh, in that the driver it hasn't got a cockpit as such or it's got an open an open open roof whatever you know you know what I mean there's no no roof as such for this vehicle so it was a bit of an interesting one uh, trying to design that and certainly when it came around the around towards the back it was a bit of gear quite a lot of guesswork actually uh, of putting in pipes and trying to get it to all sort of go together because I mean the, the bodywork on this car is not particularly high uh, it's not particularly high at all I mean the driver head sticks out of the car of course being a, a, like an open an open cockpit uh, vehicle so yeah a little bit of a little bit of a faff I went through all sorts of different iterations uh, <laughs> with the pipes at the back until I got to a stage that I was uh, I was kind of happy with we then came to put in the wheels uh, it was a fairly. It wasn't the hardest thing I've had to put wheels on uh, at the front. Again, just stick on the the wheel hubs, and everything just about fits within the the front of the vehicle. It's it's wide enough. In fact, I think I actually went back and uh, added one block in either side to uh, make it make the wheels stick out a little bit more. Uh, again, coming round to the back uh, and sticking the wheels on there as well. Uh, yeah, making sure that we, unfortunately we can't at the moment. This game is very much in development. We can't at the moment have the wheels sort of in line with the body. I haven't found a way of doing that sensibly. So yeah, the wheels are going to be stuck out uh, just a little bit to the side so that uh, so that the car is, is, is to make it work properly, if you like. I then came to adding in the seat. This is where you see it might be a little bit on the small side. <laughs> I keep forgetting how huge the seat is uh, in this. I had to take out a couple of the pipes uh, in the middle, uh, or sort of around that middle area, to fit the seat in nicely. But it does go in there, and it's about the right height. Just just about the right height um, for for the for the driving position, if you like, in this car. And I've got the little fin uh, on the back. There's a lot more curves around the back of the Delta Wing that I just can't put on uh, in this game. It can't, I can't do that, uh, I'm afraid. So there we go. That is the the basics of the Delta Wing, shall, shall we say. Uh, yeah, there is, is it, uh, and then, <laughs> then things get a little bit confused. I was going to try to show the car on the floor. The physics got incredibly angry at me. What's going on? As I said, in development game, I don't know what <laughs> what I did to upset physics. It got very unhappy. Uh, but yeah, that's the basic shape of the Delta Wing. As is, is, the actual car is a hell of a lot more curves to it, but this is the best that I can do. So it's, it's a little bit of a uh, a triangular uh, Delta Wing. Came into uh, putting the the other important parts. Fuel tanks fitted in quite nicely uh, along the front. It wasn't enough space for a large fuel tank, so we've got four of the smaller ones, which isn't really a problem. And then we have the engines at the back. Now they were a tight squeeze fitting the <laughs> fitting the engines in there again uh, when you're building up the framework i didn't necessarily think about how big the engines were they just fit in they just just fit in to the uh, the chassis uh, of this vehicle and then of course it is around to uh, linking everything up now on this vehicle i was determined to have it rear wheel drive and the last time i tried to build rear wheel drive i built the big semi truck it didn't really work it wasn't particularly happy being uh, rear wheel drive. The minute I made it, um, well, I get okay. I, it was kind of four wheel drive because it was four backwards. The minute I made it all wheel drive, shall we say? It um, 
yeah, it, it was a hell of a lot better. So I wanted to try, at least, with this vehicle. I'm assuming, I'm, I'm fairly confident the Delta Wing is rear-wheel drive, yeah? I haven't been a massive fool. I presume it probably is. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to keep it as close to the uh, actual actual Delta Wing as possible. And then it's around uh, fiddling with the, the settings, making sure you've got all the wheels, uh, the left side wheels and the steering wheels and so on and so forth. And then the vehicle was pretty much ready to go. Things had gone remarkably smoothly uh, up until this point. I'm just going through testing here to to make sure that everything is all connected up properly, make sure that uh, that everything's working. So quick, quick check of the steering, uh, drop the car on the floor. This time physics doesn't get angry and throw the chassis around and then get, <laughs> give it a quick drive, uh, quite quick, as it bumps into the wall. The thing that I noticed that concerned me slightly is we did get a little bit of a wheelie uh, going on when we launched it off again. Yeah, the Delta Wing was doing a was doing quite a, quite a wheelie, uh, and then I, I quickly realised what I had done a little bit wrong with this vehicle when we put it outside to give it a proper test. Uh, now, first off, you will notice the vehicle is slightly leaning back. Uh, the engines may be uh, putting a little bit too much weight over the back of the of, of the car which was not helping stability. I also, I thought I changed all of the traction settings on the tyres, put the grip level a lot lower so that it doesn't do silly stuff. I then later came back and realised it hadn't saved them settings. It was, uh, uh, yeah, my bad on that one. Uh, so, <laughs> combine the fact with we had huge amounts of grip uh, on the tyres and uh, a wonky, slightly wonky weight distribution. The engines were too far back or the, the wheels were a little bit too far forward. Uh, we had some real problems with the Delta Wing. So it was back to the garage for a bit of a redesign. I basically extended the whole thing by, I think it's by one, one nine pipe, if you like, nine long pipe uh, at the back to give us uh, some more stability. The engines pretty much remained where they were. We just moved the wheels uh, further back uh, in the car and we extended the little fin bit. Uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's, it's a little bit better, uh, it's better, much better for stability. Uh, it's a little bit better for scale, I think, as well, to the Delta Wing. I think it perhaps needs to be a little bit wider at the back. If I was to redo it, it would perhaps be a bit wider um, at the back. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> we got to the stage now where it got so far in that, uh, yeah, I was, I was kind of, uh, I was happy to go, uh, to go with this one. And, again, it's just a quick check of all of the systems to make, to make sure that the uh, the car is uh, is working again after the adjustments and yeah it it, it, will, it would be a lot a lot more a lot more stable uh, now we shouldn't get the huge wheel well it's fun wheeling uh, <laughs> wheeling cars i was hoping we wouldn't get the same silly wheelies and sure enough we could drive it around the little workshop without too many problems apart from bumping into an invisible an invisible wall far too acceler too, far too fast accelerating car I tried to run over the mechanic -y person didn't work um, yeah far too fast accelerating really for this uh, for this for this garage and it was back outside to give the vehicle a test uh, a sort of a sort of a yeah a, a proper a proper kind of kind of driving test if you like so we jump back into the car and fire the thing up and things are much better we're not wheeling we've got some stability uh, we're not quite falling uh, falling over the minute we go around a corner I gave it a quick test and this is not the stablest of cars. This is with the tyre grips at, uh, at a sensible level. The 0.3 sideways grip is what, what we're using, for, what I use for all of these. It will still tip over if you wiggle it around a bit. And when you slam on the brakes, uh, it gets a little bit, a little bit confused uh, quite <laughs> on, on, on the slowing down front. The front wheels bob around. Uh, it was better. It was much, much better. However, I did notice another slight problem. What I'd done is I'd built a pipe from the front of the car to the back of the car to try and keep the wheels all on the same level. What I realised is I'd basically been attaching the, the wheel hubs at the back, sort of on the end, uh, on, you can kind of see there, uh, on, on, the, on the end, or I was attaching them on the ends rather than from the tops, so I had the car was slightly lower at the back than it was at the front which wasn't ideal it certainly wasn't helping the wheelieing and the weight distribution at the start and i was wondering if that may have not been helping the handling either after a quick adjustment on that wasn't too bad uh, sorting that one out uh, the vehicle was now sitting nice flat and level uh, when we came to put it out on the road it would still fall over it would still have have issues i'm not sure why it would on on this one i i 
do with perhaps being a little bit wider? I don't know. Um, it, it just wasn't massively happy with sort of aggressive change, change of direction. I may I may have needed to turn, I put the steering angle on the front up to 20 instead of 10. Maybe if I put that a little bit lower, it would be a bit happier. Um, that's probably, that probably would have been a clever idea. Uh, the one thing that it was struggling a little bit with was straight line speed. Despite having two V6 engines, it wasn't particularly quick in a straight line. It wasn't too bad to drive, provided you were a little bit careful with the steering uh, and weren't too and weren't too crazy with the inputs. You could make it roll if you wanted to, but if you didn't and you kept things kept things calm, it was pretty good to drive. But it was really lacking speed. 170 kilometers an hour, I think, going downhill was about the best that we could get. It was working quite well being rear wheel drive as well. It didn't have it didn't have to be four wheel drive to be sort of drivable around here, which was uh, which was another another good uh, good plus point. Yeah, the vehicle was, was perfectly drivable. Uh, so I had to come back in here to try to try and figure out, uh, or I wanted to try and figure out a way of, uh, of first sorting out the brakes that were causing problems. Uh, I, sh I stuck the brake force all the way up. I think it, I can't remember what it I think it starts off at 500. So I stuck the brake force all the way up to a thousand to try and give it um, better brakes. The other important thing that uh, that we needed the gear ratios. This started off at I think it was 1.7, uh, which is why it was just sitting buzzing in the limiter at 170 kilometers an hour. It needed longer gear ratios. So I put it down to 0.5. I think it could probably go uh, longer ratios than that still if you wanted to, uh, but made the ratios on both engines a lot longer so that we could actually get some more some more straight line speed out of the car because 170 kilometers an hour is not not really quick enough for a sort of race car uh, so it, it was quite a bit of fiddling uh, in this one to be honest getting sort of the, the fine tuning of the little things uh, with the brake force turned up it did make the car shall we say um interesting i'm completely missed the button on the <laughs> on the first one i clicked the, i pressed the wrong button on the keyboard and completely missed missed the braking to start with uh, we did get it stopped quite nicely on top of the hill, though. So I was I was feeling confident that uh, that I that I had sorted out some of the, the braking things. I may have put the braking fault a little bit too high when I slammed on the brakes and it catapulted the car over. It, it's not really ideal. It's not really ideal to be honest. When when you do that, uh, sometimes you can get away get away with it. You could go on the brakes and it would sort of bounce and. Uh, at least it did have brakes though. Uh, the best way to really slow the vehicle down was kind of tap the brakes and that kind of worked. Better than the blooming reliant rocket ro rocket robin thing we had last time that just didn't stop at all. Uh, this did have brakes. I toyed around with uh, the the braking grip for, for a little while. I haven't quite found the magic number. I think I put it down to about 650 uh, and went around the car. Oh, I think I put the fronts down to 650. I don't know if I touched the back ones. Uh, yeah, just... Turn, turn the uh, turn the braking down uh, a little bit. It was the front that was the real problem, the wheels. It could also be the slight to do with the suspension. You can see the wheels getting a little bit um, wibbly and wobbly uh, when we jump on the brakes. Yeah, cha change that up so we should now have better braking performance. Uh, we don't fall over quite as much when we go around corners. And with much longer gear ratios, it's, uh, we were hoping to get a bit better, a bit better speed out of the car, and and we did. It was it was much better, as you can see. It's shooting, uh, shooting up the speed, and it's not buzzing in the limiter uh, already. Now it'll still <laughs> it will still roll over when you stamp on the brakes. So yeah, gotta be gotta be a bit careful with the brakes. Quite vicious uh, on some of these cars. Uh, I, I do quite I do quite like the fact that you just can't touch the brakes for any length of time. Otherwise, you have a big crash. Sometimes it's all right. Like there, it, it wasn't too bad. You just got to—it's it's definitely just sort of a, a tapping, tapping of the brakes. There's a knack to it, certainly, uh, uh, to slowing, to slowing these cars down. Um, yeah, then it was off to have a bit of uh, a bit of a drive uh, around, around the sort of the outside course, if you like. It's not a bad car. It's not a bad car at all to drive this one. As a being rear-wheel drive, it was very, very controllable, much better than previous stuff that uh, <laughs> that I'd try and try and made uh, rear-wheel drive. Uh, I definitely think I'd probably turn the steering input down a little bit uh, if, for, for the next vehicle. This was, I think, too much. It was, it was too sharp. You can see it getting a little bit, a little bit twitchy uh, through here. Also, driving on a keyboard is not really ideal. So yeah, had to be careful. Speed was an awful lot better. Uh, we're up to 280, up to past 300 kilometers an hour before we, <laughs> before we hit some bumps and promptly rolled the car. 
it's not the most stable of vehicles, not the most stable of, uh, of designs as it turns out on here. Uh, could, I could probably make the whole thing a little bit wider. Uh, may may help a bit on on that one. Yeah, little bit a little bit twitchy, a uh, li little bit unstable at times, but. It was it was pretty damn quick and it had its moments of being of being very good fun to drive. Yeah, they've got quite a few terrifying things to do with the, do with the car, trying to slow it down from from the high speeds. It did start lifting up through this corner, which is always interesting. Going up on two wheels, uh, <laughs> at that time finding a solid solid ro a solid wall. Sorry, and of course we've got to have some rolls. It wouldn't be a fail race video without something falling over and rolling down the road five or six times. So yeah, the Delta Wing was, it was it's a working car. Uh, it drives fairly well, it certainly takes a bit of practice to get used to it, got to be careful uh, with this particular vehicle, but it does work, it looks the, it looks just about the part. It's a strange, a really strange shape to build a vehicle in. I, <laughs> I'm not sure quite the reasons why, uh, why, <laughs> why Nissan built this uh, as it is, but uh, there we go, yeah. <laughs> The brakes are quite amusing on it. Uh, yeah, I I quite like this car. It was quite it was an interesting one. It was a challenging one, uh, certainly, to uh, to get to get the shape right on it. Uh, but it did drive. It drove okay. It got it can it can go around the track. It actually did quite well off road. I mean, this is not really designed to be an off roading vehicle, but it will it will tackle the bumps without without too many issues. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So I uh, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.